Well, we are back once again, guys. The Bogetti Bunch podcast, me and Bronte sit down, hang out. It's kind of my favorite time of the every other week where we get to just hang out with microphones in front of us so she can't get too mad at me because she's... <laughs> This she knows this has to go to the public. Yeah, you've been itching to podcast with me these past few days. Yeah, well, I feel like you know it's it's part of a routine. Yeah, I like oh, to yeah. keep a routine going a little bit here. Yeah, but figured we would uh, sit down. We got some random stuff to talk about, all kinds of different things. We've had discussions that we want to involve the people in mm-hmm. recently. Where do you want to start? We should d- get back to the topic of how like the. What is it? When when I <laughs> podcast with other people and how it's an interview uh, or not. Yeah, the podcast structure. Yes. I had that written down. She has too. some gripes about the podcast structure. Yeah. I mean, my thing is when I listen to a podcast episode, like Cooper's having all these cool guests on, I want to hear some things specifically that have to do with them. Like Cooper doesn't want it to be an interview style, and I understand that, but you're also having these cool guests on where – you should be asking them questions, you know? And then you can ask specific questions and then go off of that and have like your other conversational style that you like. But I think there does have to be some structure with like important questions that you ask. But that's my opinion. That's what I like to listen to. So we are wondering like, do you guys like just the sit down, casual talk with people or do you want to hear more specific things from these people, you know? Yeah, I, I think that comes down to what style podcast I'm going for. I yeah. When I think about it, I just want to like a car guy in the seat across from me mm-hmm. and we're just hanging out. I kind of think of it like after the race track, we'll go out to dinner with people. And what and, you're talking about And you're there. just sitting there hanging out. You're talking about cars. You're kind of like it's it's not really like an interview style because I don't want to be like an interviewer. But I feel like you can't like you. It's a mix. I think the Doug one was a good in between, mm-hmm. but you think it was more just me and Doug hanging out. Yeah, I didn't listen to the whole thing yet. I listened to like forty five minutes in, yeah. I think, and it felt a little bit more hanging out. And I was like, Doug has so many of these cool things about him. Like I want to hear more, a little bit more in depth of it. Like you did touch like the subjects and stuff, but. Personally, I just, I like having a little bit more to that. Yeah, I get that completely. But I'm also sure, like, most of the people watching this are car people, so they probably will agree with you, or they like just the sit-down chat, like, cool car talk, you know? But I'm just thinking you're having so many cool people on that people want to hear, like, about them, you know? Yeah, like, the background. But, like, then it gets, like, almost boring and repetitive, if I'm like, what got you See, into racing? Where did you get like? Yeah, but for me, it gets like. Yeah, but you don't have to ask them the same questions. You have specific tr- questions towards what they do. Yeah. Like, you know, you're. I mean, you're not going to ask Doug specifically, like, oh, what'd you get into racing? But like, I want to hear more about like motion race first, yeah. like how that got started and things like that. I don't know if you went into that again. I haven't listened. A to little bit. Thing. I think like Justin Swanstrom was a good in between. Like, I got like a lot of conversation but it was Mm -hmm. also a lot of like i was able to like fire off questions yeah doug was more like because me and doug know each other really well i know like you yeah we're hanging out i know but that's also like fun for me and if i think it's fun then maybe somebody at home is like enjoying just listening to like car talk yeah from an expert and and an idiot and it might also be a different side of like Doug that they haven't heard like in a long form like talking just sit down chill so maybe people do like that but there also might be other people who are like I want to know more about like what he does and his everyday like stuff with his business you know I don't know that's that's what I like to listen to well in a long conversation you end up getting that you end up like when you have a long enough conversation with someone you end up getting like their backstory, even if you didn't specifically ask for it, which is a very interesting thing in my opinion too. It's mm-hmm. like it's not structured, but then at the end of it, you get all this information that you didn't sign up for almost. Yeah, and that for me is where it gets like it feels like all over the place almost. You know what I mean? Because you're talking about something, but then like it kind of goes off into this tangent that touches a little bit here and then like – you know, like oh yeah, we're definitely all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it's just a conversation that yeah. really just goes anywhere. Yeah, 
And that's kind of and the I'm, fun of it. And I I've, know. some I know other like people that. I've talked to, like when I'm like, oh, come on the podcast, they're like, like, what do you have like topics? Like, what are we going to talk about? And I'm like, I don't know. I'll say something <laughs> and then we'll keep talking. Yeah, but so, I, okay, I write but, stuff down. I do write stuff I down. I know you do write stuff down, but also some people aren't just like off the cuff like you are. That's where I'm. And that's I, where I also wonder <laughs> with his guests, do they come in wondering like, is Cooper going to ask me questions or are we just sitting down and talking? Because you can go off and just like talk to someone like you can lead the conversation the entire time. But like sometimes you have to do that a and, little bit. And yeah, and you'll tell like your side a little bit and your stories that relate to something. But like they might not feel like it's enough of them. Does that make sense? Because I felt that way. We had a little <laughs> disagreement in the beginning on our first podcast, I was like, I want to be a guest. Like, you sit down and, like, treat me like how all of your guests do. And we filmed an episode, and it wasn't like that, and it never got posted because I was like, I didn't like it. Like, he just, like, went off on his stuff. Like, I wanted it to be, like, about me. And that's yeah. how I feel about the guests. I'm like, I wonder if they want it to be a little bit more about them. You know, I'm thinking about the guests as well. Yeah. No, I get that. Like, maybe they don't feel, like, enough. But I, I hope that if a guest shows up, they're not afraid to, like, steer a conversation a little bit. Like, yeah. they could just, like, bring up a topic. Like, hey, Cooper, have you ever heard about this? Yeah. Well, and then, or, like, oh, recently, you know, we were at the track and this happened. And yeah. they could just tell me. Because it's, like, I don't want to have to, like, I, I can't pry all of that out. Like, I can't, yes, like. I know. But some people are, like, nervous and it takes them a minute to yeah. get there. But I also think maybe you should say, like, hey, I'm going to ask you a few questions, but, like, I want this just to be, like, a conversation, like, if we're just sitting down after the track. And, like, if you have stories, if you have a question for me, like, just just say it. Say whatever you want, yeah. you know? Like, like you said on the side, be yourself. Like, just... Yeah, I have a sign up there now <laughs> that I just put up that says, talk into the mic, phone on silent, need to pee, just ask, <laughs> don't make a lot of noise, be yourself, and tell, tell me, me something, something cool. Yeah, like, be yourself and tell me something cool, like... Mm -hmm. Make it known that it's like very casual if that's what you want it to be like, you know, I definitely want it to be casual because I, that's what I wonder. I would love to know, like the people that have been on your podcast, are they thinking they're coming on and it's going to be like an interview style or are they thinking it's just like sit down, hang out. We're talking about whatever we want. Yeah, I you don't know? know because that's a good question. If if I do interview style, that also brings me a lot to like, OK, I've had that guest on. They can't come back. Yeah, because I've already like covered when I need to. No, but you could you could do that first kind of interview style, and then the next one, it could be more like yeah. casual car talk. That's the thing, because, like, you know, Doug can come back on again, and we could have another two hours of conversation that's completely different. I mean, you could have one that's just about motion, another episode that's just yeah. about TBM, like, all that stuff. It's very easy when you're just yeah. having a conversation and hanging out. Yeah. And I think that's what I want it to be, is, like, you tune in and you listen to just car guys hanging out yeah well let us know what you guys think and if you like that yeah i do enjoy it it is i i just wonder if the people want a little bit more from the guests like a little bit more structure and like actually speaking of so i added a join section to the youtube channel so mm -hmm. you can join for i think it's 2.99 a month if you just want to buy us a coffee mm -hmm. but then it's, and just like support the channel yeah but then also it's nine ninety nine a month to really support the channel heavily. Mm -hmm. You guys are awesome if you've signed up for that. I've already got a couple. And I will post who's coming on mm -hmm. into that tab. So if you it, – it weeds out a lot of spam by doing that. Like if I just posted it on Facebook, I would get spam. Yeah, yeah. But by doing it where you have to pay to get some skin in the game, mm -hmm. I think people will care a little bit more about the questions that are asked. Yep. So when we're having somebody on, I'll post it in there 24, 48 hours before, something like that I'll try to. <laughs> and then we can talk about what to ask them, and then you guys will be able to chime in. Yep. And then we could do like a... Maybe a little segment um, at the end where yeah, it's like... Yeah, like members-only questions. Yeah. Or if the questions are really good, they could just be like worked in somewhere. Yeah, yeah. If the topics, it, topics, questions, kind of whatever it mm -hmm. needs to be. But I think that'll be a really fun one. Yeah, I love that idea. And then it gives people the chance to support the channel. I'm not putting anything behind the paywall. Mm -hmm. You're not going to not get anything if you don't sign up. Mm -hmm. You just get bonus yeah. ability. So that'll be fun. Good stuff. Yeah, I put those things in front of you too. I'm surprised you haven't what spun the? them. No, yeah, I was looking at this thing. What is this? Look, you put it on that table and it spins. Wait, what? How does it work? 
Like this? No, no. It, they're already sitting and you just... Oh. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> they're very... Oh. They're quiet, too. You can't even hear it in the microphone. Do they just spin forever? They spin for a long time. Yeah, what the heck? Yeah. That's crazy. They're just well, like <laughs> little fidget things on the table that yeah, are quiet. Yeah. <laughs> like the rubber is nice because it's quiet. Quiet. Those are quiet. <laughs> you just sit here and you're yeah. going to hear it. I have one on my desk upstairs and it's very addicting. Yeah, where'd you get these? Amazon? I've, I've had them for a little while. Yeah. Just finally broke them out. Mm. Um, but yeah, so, well, I forgot to finish that. Um, if you do want to sign up and support... We appreciate it very much. Yes. And you have to do it not on mobile. You have to go do it on your computer, computer or on the desktop version or on your Android version because Apple takes 30% cut. So we don't want Apple taking 30% cut. Mm -hmm. They got enough money. Are you sure that's the reason why it's not showing up on phone? <sighs> I Googled it. So. Okay. Google yeah. told you. I mean, Google owns YouTube, so <laughs> kind of YouTube told yeah. me. But, yeah, there was a few different... Um, few different things also the skies in new york i feel bad for everybody oh, in new york yeah. our home state is man it's ravished by canada yeah I mean, Canadians. if you didn't know cooper and i are from new york we grew up on long island but my dad actually lived in new york city and he just recently moved to jersey which is like it's like literally right across the river and i was facetiming him the other day and like looking outside and it, you, you can usually see the whole city skyline from his apartment couldn't see it at all. Yeah. Like, it's scary. It's crazy right now. So yeah. I know what that's like. I was in Australia when Australia was on fire, pretty mm -hmm. much. And it was so smoky, you couldn't see, you know, from me to, like, the camera. Yeah. I couldn't see anything. And I know what it's like. And I feel terrible because it's so hard on your lungs and there's nowhere to escape it. Mm -hmm. Even indoors, it was smoky. Bad, yeah. Like, there's just nowhere to escape that. I don't know, I know. what yeah. you do. Like, I was, I was thinking, like, is there anything they could do to, like, push it through faster? But it's like, like what? Leaf blower? Yeah, leaf blowers. <laughs> Everybody fans. point your leaf blower Everyone, up in the air. I know. But, like, I was thinking about that, and it sounds funny, but it's like, is there any, there is, like, nothing you can do. It just has to naturally, like, the wind blow it out. Yeah. I mean, that's all it's you have crazy. to hope for. Rain. If rain comes, rain. it'll make it, like, mm -hmm. it'll help get rid of it. If mm -hmm. wind comes, it'll get rid of it. But yeah. it really needs rain, because I think wind will just keep blowing more in yeah actually mike messaged me and he i think he said it's in like virginia yeah Wait, mike vargas messaged my girl over here <laughs> what the heck no because i posted <laughs> what the yeah, heck he said it's all the way in virginia too can't see the sun yeah that's crazy he it's replied to like my story very that dystopian about. Yeah, I mean, we he was, we were messaging the other day, too, about the story that we said last week. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great story. That's a top tier. Mike said, I pretty much said only a psychopath would fold it and put it back. And he said he 100% wiped his ass and balls I with did it, it for him. I did it for Mike. <laughs> We you need to, go to the next, last episode. We need to cut story. that story and post it on, like, Facebook yeah. or on... Um, TikTok or yeah, something because sure. that's a funny one. So funny. <laughs> that was um, a good one. But yeah, so the New York stuff is really sad. And hopefully, it's. Yeah, I you wonder have to if it's live gonna come all the way down here if it's in Virginia. No, probably not. No. The jet stream won't let it because it okay. just kind of carries across. Got it. But then, because it's summer jet stream, it kind of like dips down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that's no winter dips down more. So I guess it happening now helps the most. Mm. But, yeah, it's not a good deal. It's a bad deal. So people yeah. are going to have to go underground, which is very dystopian. What yeah. Like mole people. Like live underground. People in New York? Yeah. To stay away from the smoke. You got to get low. So, like, <laughs> all the homeless people in the subways, they're in the right spot. It's probably nice and clear. It wouldn't go down there? I don't no, think I guess, so. No, it does stay. Yeah, it stays, like, higher. Yeah. So that's kind of how it works. I wonder if it's, like cooling it down a lot because it's blocking the sun like Maybe. i would imagine the city's kind of cool chill yeah because that's uh, how um that's how like ice ages happen when the sun gets blocked out mm. yeah you can hear it a little bit a little bit sorry i need Ronty's to stop fidget. yeah i should take those away from any yeah. anybody <laughs> i also added spacemen spacemen oh yeah i know my little spacemen over here i'm trying to get used to wearing headphones I, I really like wearing them. 
I I have adjusted my volume three times. Let's talk about your next topic. Um, The general mass of people not knowing much about cars. That's what I wrote down. I forget how this started. Yeah, well... You were thinking about it the other day and posted on Facebook. Well, we were talking about it, and you were like, you posted on Facebook, what should men know how to do like adult car- males like 25 to 30 yeah. like what should you know even if you don't know how to work on it but like mm-hmm. you should know like when your tires are looking bald like your alternator had to like at least identify it mm-hmm. and identify the problem yeah maybe change a battery like i'm not to change a battery not my to standards, change a tire my standards have lowered a lot in the last five years <laughs> Like I like five years ago, I was like, "Oh, an adult male should be able to, you know, pull the motor out of their car." <laughs> now I'm like, "If he can change the windshield wiper, <laughs> I'd be happy." Okay, but I was saying, and yes, I agree with Cooper. We had this conversation because my dad actually like was just one of those people that you know he would call someone to to do the stuff, and I was saying that I feel like there is a lot of people out there who go to the dealership, they buy their car. And that's it. They don't want to deal with anything else. All they know is they have to get an oil change every 5,000 miles, whatever. And if the tire is flat, like, or the tire is low, fill it with air. I feel like that is the, like, yeah. baseline of what people know and care to know what to do. But That's a luxury, on. though. That is a luxury to be able to not have to worry about. Like, that. Like if you have a house and you don't have to worry about anything because mm-hmm. you just have somebody that does it all, it's like a luxury. Yes, for 100%. And my dad did have that luxury back then where he just, like, called someone up. Yeah, like, he had a Maserati, which is, like, the yeah. most unreliable, constant but, service needed car. But it, it, this is a kind of, like, a side topic, but it's funny because, like, I grew up with that with my dad, and then... I rode horses when I was younger and one of the, like two of the trainers, it was husband and wife and the husband could like fix anything at the barn. Like, and I always looked at that and I was like, that's so cool to like have someone that can like fix anything. And then when I met Cooper, that was like one of the things I loved about him was like, he could fix anything. Like still to this day, I give you any problem, you figure it out. Like you can fix anything, fix anything on my car, like put something back together. Like, I just love that. But I mean, there's a lot of people out there that just don't I, know how. I also have a mindset that I think I can fix everything. Yeah. That really gets me into trouble. I mean, but you can. <laughs> it's just a lot of time it's not done in the best way. <laughs> yeah, like I think I can repair you, anything. No, no, you can, but it's like you think you can do it in a nice way. <laughs> That's where it's like not always nice. Yeah, I'm more like of a... Like bootleg uh, together. Like, when you're doing woodworking, I'm like, ah, just wing it. Yeah. No, but, like, you can do it. It's just sometimes you do it, and it's done shit. It's done, like, a shitty job, but it is done. You did fix it. Like, yeah. it's just done shittily. I mean, this <laughs> wasn't up last time we filmed, yeah. but looks I great. think that fits the description of not done great, but it's good enough. Why? I think it looks good. I think it could be a lot better. Like if I if, think your friend Joe would say it could be better. Yes, but like Adam, who works at the Freedom Factory, yeah, he is like a, a craftsman when it comes to woodworking. Oh, really? And oh, I like, didn't know that. He would look at this and be like, oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> like, I, I just know that, but yeah. But I'm just not that level of woodworking ship, mm-hmm. and I'm kind of just not that level of like building cars. I kind of have just like... But you can do it. like Good you, enough at everything, good enough, but yes. not great at any one thing. <laughs> yeah. But that's kind of nice that you're good enough at everything because you really can, like, fix everything. Like, it would kind of suck if it was like, oh, I can do a phenomenal job on board work. But then if it was something on the car and you're like, well, I can't do that. You know, I'd rather you be good enough at everything. Well, it's even like when it comes to, like, computer (laughs) stuff like Photoshop and editing. Just good enough (laughs) to do it. But not quite good enough to be like... A I'm a graphic designer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just right under the level of like yeah. master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is it? Like amateur? Yeah. I'm, I'm getting better with Photoshop. Yeah. Editing, yeah. I just have no desire to get any fancier because like mm-hmm. I don't like like hard cuts and like filters over stuff and like. You know, I watch a lot of videos that have like such nice edits and I love watching it. But then when it comes to editing it, I'm like, I don't have the energy for that. <laughs> <laughs> like B-roll and like pretty cut 
shots and like changing things. Like zoom as you're like filming. Yeah. Like, I love watching it. I just, I don't have the energy to do it. Yeah. You also but need wait, like a real like so, eye for it. So back on track, what were we going to ask the people? About we were talking it? about like, what is your like, does the baseline keep moving to what a man should be able to yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. Comment down below what you think. Because Cooper had a, a lot of people coming on his Facebook post, but comment down below what you think a man should be able to do. And actually, Alan, if you know Alan, you know, you know, wrote a very great comment that I loved. It was like, open the door for women. What else did he write? That one stuck with me. Yeah, he had a couple good ones. He had a couple good ones. Yep. I want to look. And then he... um. What I said was need to use a rat need to be able to use a ratchet strap. That's that's, like, imp- that's a, a, an important one. Yeah, changing a tire is nice. Mm-hmm. I've been in situations though where I couldn't change the tire even though I had everything. Here's Alan. Open the door for ladies. Wait to start eating until everyone has their food. Help slash assist with elderly and thank military and law enforcement. That's just being that's a good great. gentleman. Yeah, but that's like that. Yeah. Go, that no, that's is a good part one. of it. Yeah, it's definitely um, yeah. Definitely the right way to to be. Mm -hmm. So Alan kind of knows the deal. He knows what's going on. He does. But what men should know. I mean, that's where like I'm so I I hate to be like, oh, if you don't know how to do this by the age of 30. But like then are you gatekeeping stuff? Somebody commented they were like be able to launch a boat and stuff. And I was like, yeah, but like a lot of people have never been around a boat. Yeah. (laughs) Like, that'd be like, oh, know how to work on your race car. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, a lot of people. Well, what if it's, like, what if some people are, like, 25 and they haven't had a car yet or something? That's what I mean. Yeah, it's tough. Like, you're gatekeeping some stuff, but you should still be able to identify on a car. Even if if you you don't have a car, like, that's an alternator. That's a starter. You should know what the transmission does. Yeah, but what if you just haven't been around a car? Yeah, but or like, like looked in the engine of a car. Yeah, I just feel like that's a that's a cop out. Like yeah. being able to like back up a trailer. Like some people have never used a trailer, backed yeah. up a trailer. Mm-hmm. I've still crashed my trailer every now and then. <laughs> crashed my trailer the other day into the fence. So I was on the phone with Jim. Oh, yeah. I backed it our right fence, into the fence. People, our fence. Yeah, our fence, our trailer well, too. I don't know. I don't that's know why you're paying were. for it. <laughs> Because it's ours. I didn't know if people were thinking, like, uh, who knows where you were. Oh, yeah, I crashed into Garrett's fence. (laughs) (laughs) Thankfully, he didn't know I was there, so just peeled out. (laughs) No, it was our fence, and I was like, oh, my God, freaking crash into our fence. Oh, the other day I wanted to rant about this a little bit. So I came to the realization when I was looking down at Luna that if you're going to get a small dog... You probably really just want a cat and Mm. nobody's told you yet. Mm. Like there's nothing that a small dog does that a cat isn't better at doing. (laughs) Like small (laughs) dogs are like there's really no benefit to them. There was no like, oh, protection or like. You know, okay, l- but Luna barks like when people are at the door, like and when people aren't. <laughs> so like, but she's senile. She's if you like, bark when people dimension. are at the door and aren't, it n- it negates yeah. all of your usefulness. Should we tell the people about Luna? That we're gonna get rid of her? Yeah. No, that's fine. We can tell them that we're gonna get rid of her. <laughs> we're not getting rid of her. No. She's going back to her sister for. Some time. I'm sure she'll be back. (laughs) She's like herpes. (laughs) You don't ever fully get rid of it. It just flares up. (laughs) You know, like it's not that time of year where, oh, shit, herpes flaring up again. Better not go around everyone. Luna was originally my mom and sisters. My, My sister was the one that wanted her. Like Luna was my sister's dog, but she was still in high school. And then we took her for a little bit. But. My sister's, like, got a job, got a place. She's got a boyfriend, so they're taking Luna back. Yeah. So. They will be borrowing her because I I don't. <laughs> borrowing her. I, I don't feel like, I don't feel like she's out of our life even I once know. they take her. I like, know. I know. I know until she's in the ground, she's going to be in my life. I just have this, like, She has this to be. She's thought. become, like, a part of our life for the past three years, like. I mean, I'm a little sad, but it is what it is. Like, we got a lot going on. I don't think on. she's gone. <laughs> I don't think she's going to be just gone. What is she like? 
but this is what I was saying. Like, just get a cat because there is nothing that I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, a cat wouldn't do this. Like, there's nothing like <laughs> where, like, the small dog isn't any better than a cat. It is worse in every way. They usually go in the house, both the same. Cats and small dogs both <laughs> usually go to the bathroom yeah, in the house. That is thing that little dogs pee or poop in but the house. But think about yes. cats. They, they use a litter box. Dogs. Like, the small dogs don't protect your house. They just don't. Okay, fine. Either do cats. No, but, like, Luna makes noise. Like, a cat wouldn't make noise if a door was open. Yeah, but Luna makes noise no matter what. Yeah, but still, like, it is, like, it's a different type of, like, I can tell that when okay, she barks so different if, like, the door opens. A little bit extra safety. Mm-hmm. You, walking, like, do you really want to walk your small dog? <laughs> Nobody's ever not looked ridiculous walking a small dog. People do walk their small dogs, though. Yeah, and they look ridiculous. <laughs> I've never once seen somebody walking a small dog guys, and been like, just, oh, I want to go pet that dog. Guys, just picture Cooper walking Luna. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> what, what did your dad say the one time when Lovey or something? Someone was walking by and he said a different <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so Cooper's grandparents have a little dog. It's like a Maltese or something. Shih Tzu. Sh- yeah. So she and her name is Lovey. So what's the story? My dad was walking the dog one time, and <laughs> somebody walked by, and he had to like call to the dog, <laughs> and he just said a different name. <laughs> He's like, I'm not calling her Lovey. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what he called it, but he didn't call it lovey. I respect that in the moment decision. <laughs> You're like, I'd probably do the same. Yeah. I would have let her off the leash and been like, I don't know, not mine. Oh my God, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny that's that's how my dad also feels about small dogs. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to walk them. <laughs> Taking them to the dog park kind of sucks. Yeah. So there's just really no benefit. <laughs> Yeah, we, Especially, like, if we, you live in an apartment, just get a cat. I have no, like, I think it's an older generation where they think, like, cats have this negative connotation to them. I don't like cats. You see, you're part of that, like... No, but I have my reasons. I don't like cats because they scratch. A lot of the time, they're mean. They hiss at you. They'll scratch you. And I don't like when they're... they're Luna like, does that. <laughs> Luna scratches at you. If you walk in the door, Luna scratches at you. <laughs> okay, but it's... Cats are like, <laughs> it's different. Cats like actually like, and like not, get you. Not all the time. They're okay, but very most, rarely. Most cats are mean. I've barely, I've rarely met like a nice cat. If it's a nice cat and I can pet it and hold it, I like a cat. But a lot of the time, they're they're a little feisty. And then also this, they both live entirely too long. <laughs> cats live for like 20 years sometimes stop i want i want our dogs to live for 20 years no you don't yes i do uh, i mean like a 10 year old like big dog it's rough looking that's a sad sight like a 10 10 50- yeah that's not even that old don't say that like okay so like 14 like a 14 year old lab because i've had a couple of those growing I up i know how old's albie that's cooper's brother's He's like dog 11 11 they start I mean, to he's get. Still, he's still going, doing good though. They start to get rough looking. He still looks good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, Luna <laughs> should have just been a cat. Mm, we would have been nice. happier as a cat. Um, what about you being a terrible teacher? That I had written, written down. <laughs> yeah, I told Bronte. What did I say the other day? I was like, I wonder how you become a driving instructor. <laughs> and you were like, you'd be a terrible driving instructor. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was just wondering. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. Because Cooper is terrible with like, when you've tried to teach me how to drive a stick, it is the worst experience of my life. Wait, like, wait. Like I wait. do something and he's like, why are you doing that? I'm like, because I don't know what I'm doing. You're supposed to be teaching me. Like he's... Maybe you're a bad student. No, because you don't. You oh, don't oh, it's impossible that you're a bad student. <laughs> don't turn this around on me. <laughs> I just, I didn't turn it around. I just offered the potential, the possibility that maybe you're not receptive enough to to teaching. 
No, I am a great student and I can learn. Cooper, do you not, if I mess something up, you're like, why'd you do that? I'll ask you, like, <laughs> okay, why did you do that? Okay, but you could say, okay, you made a mistake. Like, let's learn from it. Why did you do that? Not, why did you do that? <laughs> you make it sound like you're 12, like 10 years That's old. That's how you be a teacher. You have to be patient. You have to teach, not get annoyed and yell. <laughs> mm. I mean, He's it's bad. good to have a good He's student. Bad. He cannot be a teacher. I'll teach somebody something. Teach you a lesson. <laughs> With my backhand. Yeah, teach teach a lesson out here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. The only other thing I had on my list to talk about was Cooper has been sneezing so much recently. Like, it's so aggressive. And it literally will end up giving him a bloody nose. <laughs> I've had bloody noses since I was a kid. Like, yes, but like you sneeze so hard that you give yourself a bloody nose. And I'm like, if you are sneezing more than two times, it's like, no. Imagine stop. yelling at somebody for sneezing. <laughs> the other day I was in the bathroom, closed door, and I sneezed a few times and she goes, stop. I was in it the was, bathroom. Okay, I wasn't I'm even like, near her. One sneeze, two sneeze. I was like, okay. All right. Three. I was like, Okay. Four, I was like, what the heck is going on? He Five, on I was like biting my tongue. Six, I was like, stop it. <laughs> like, why? I don't like holding in sneezes. They feel good. No. It feels but great the, to and, sneeze. And then he comes out of the bathroom <laughs> with tissue paper in his nose. And his one eye no, is... both eyes are red. Well, I saw the one. Both eyes were beet red. Water like dripping down the most. Like, are you okay? Okay. Like, why are you sneezing like this? That was unfortunate <clears throat> because I got out of the shower and my nose was bleeding in the shower. <laughs> what? Yeah, like I got a nosebleed in the shower. Yeah. So there was just blood all over the place. Wow, it looked lovely. like a murder scene. <laughs> <Lovely>. <laughs> so, like, I'm trying to, like, not get it all over everything. Yeah. Because I'm just gushing blood at this point. <laughs> oh, but you decided to start sneezing. <laughs> that came once I put the tissue paper in my nose. <laughs> Okay, but tell me, like, you can stop yourself from sneezing. Like, yeah, just like stop to. yourself. No, but it makes your bloody nose worse. I don't like to. Two is the max I will allow in our house. Just two? Two sneezes and then you're done. Maybe three. He was on, like, six or seven. I was like, this has got to stop. I mean, women understand. Sometimes you're just in like a mood and things annoy you, and that just like set that really me off. got you. I was biting my tongue and then I couldn't. I was just like, "Can you stop?" <laughs> you got so pissed. Yeah, it was pretty rude. <laughs> yeah, you were like, I think you said something like that. Like, what? That's rude. <laughs> yeah, like imagine somebody sneezing and you say, "Stop it." Because like, like I have a bloody nose, I'm sneezing, and she goes, "Can you please stop?" <laughs> like control yourself. <laughs> Literally control yourself. Like imagine I had the hiccups, and you were like, "Can you stop?" <laughs> okay, that's a little bit different. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, because you can <laughs> sneezing. You genuinely can stop. Like it's like coughing. Like you can force yourself to stop most of the time. I'm crying. I think you're just, I don't know why you're like saying all these things about like, you think people could just stop doing these things? Like you can stop farting so much, but you push them out like so hard. <laughs> like you have bad eyesight. You should just stop having bad eyesight. No, that's <laughs> not what I would say. Like my hearing issues. You should just stop having hearing loss. <laughs> yeah, that you should. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just call it quits. I'll give up on my ailments. Oh, God. I'm convinced by the age of 35, I am going to have 40% hearing loss. Great. That's great for me, guys, right? <laughs> my grandpa, I've said, I don't know if I've said this on a podcast, but my grandpa my whole life had like 80%, 90% hearing said loss. This, and he lived a great, happy life. <laughs> so peaceful. <laughs> Every situation was tranquil for him. <laughs> just, yeah. Just relax wherever you're at. <laughs> Nice and quiet. Nice and quiet. Yeah, I envy that. <laughs> yeah. That's why you stand next to cars at the track, and I'm yelling at it, and I'm like, close your ears, sometimes and he's just I do. standing there. Sometimes I do. Yeah, sometimes I do. If they're too. loud. Yeah. If it's a turbo car, I usually don't have to. <sighs> um, 
Anything else? Yeah, I I don't know why I wrote this down, but maybe it's my conspiracy talking talking. I'm convinced recycling doesn't exist. Convinced. <laughs> okay, explain. Now, you know how you separate your recycling and they mm-hmm. come pick it up. Mm-hmm. I think that they use the same garbage truck <laughs> and they dump it all in the same spot. I'm convinced they do that to make people like us in the suburbs feel like we're doing our part. And, I, and okay, I've that, been to the dump where they dump it all. And I don't think they're dumping into a different spot. That is a little bit valid because I will say I think the trucks that come by our house, they they look exactly the same. I mean, we got to look a little closer. See well, no, it's the same truck, but one they pick up in the morning and then they go and dump and it. And they pick up so early that you don't even see the <laughs> <laughs> and then they just bring it somewhere and they bury it. Because yeah. that's what they do. They just, oh they, they make you think they're not burying it because it's up on a hill. But it's really just like digging a hole and burying it. I'm I'm sure most of you guys probably have been to the dump. But if you haven't or if you have like a girlfriend or wife or fiance who hasn't been to the dump, just bring her. Yeah, like a landfill. I was shook the one time I went with Cooper. I was like, are you fucking kidding me this is what dump is <laughs> it's just um you just drive a up a mountain and then it's just a yeah it's just a pile of garbage we were leaving and i just like threw my my cups out the window because like <laughs> yeah like finish with my starbucks like yeah. literally and then they just crush it up like i have never seen that in my life there's bald eagles flying around mm-hmm. that live at the dump oh my it God. is a very sad sight and you're like oh so they just bury all this like, yeah. I've brought the most ridiculous things and just they bury it. Yeah. That's what they do. It's just like. It's so gross. And it seems like there's no like, what's your 10 year plan here? I know. Just keep building this mound bigger. <laughs> Different areas. Like soon you're going to run out of air. You'll be able to see this from everywhere in Florida. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't think recycling exists at all. And I'm convinced that they just use the same truck and dump it in the same spot to make. You know who like really feels accomplished? I'm sure like my grandpa. When he like Why? separates his garbage, he oh. always, they always do it. Yeah, like, yeah. Plastic. He's and got cans. a sign in the garbage like cans in the recycling. The the devastation that you'd feel knowing that it's all a myth. It's yeah. all a sham. Oh, don't tell him if it is. <laughs> it's all a sham. Yeah. I don't think any of it's true. Yeah. And then another- I mean, it would be curious. I'd love to. I need to look at the truck the next time it comes by. And I'd love to go to the dump and recycling and see what the recycling looks it's like. It's the same truck. It's just about where they dump it. So, like, they could have two yeah. different spots that they dump it. Okay. But so I don't see. think that they dump it in two different spots. But we should see if there is a recycling spot with, like, a bunch of stuff. I really don't think so. It's, I think there it's is. Maybe. If you go to the dump and you're like, oh, I'm bringing recycling, there is an area where you bring recycling. Yeah, they probably... Oh, put it in that dumpster, and then they just <laughs> dump it. True. Wait, how long have we been going for? Only like 40 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Can we wrap it up soon? Okay. Um, I want to go on a 12-hour walk. Do I sound oh, crazy? Cooper's been talking about this a lot. Yeah. I want to, once my ankle's healed up, mm-hmm. there's this thing where you walk for 12 hours. You don't listen to anything. No music, no podcast, no cell phone. Mm-hmm. And you just walk. You just walk. And it. It's kind of crazy to think about like 12 hours of walking. Like we can all imagine like a four hour walk or like a three hour walk. Mm -hmm. I mean, that even sounds long. Like like 12 hours sounds like your brain will do some crazy stuff. I feel like normally people go on like an hour walk, like 45 minute hour walk. Yeah. Probably like the average, you know. Mm -hmm. So four hours sounds like a lot. 12 is like, holy crap. But I feel like it would be a very cool experience just to be outside no phone, not listening to anything, and just, like, walking. Yeah, you would almost want, like, a pen and paper to write down your thoughts. Like, ideas, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, like, I'm sure you'll have some, like, I, I guess it's just, like, you get, like, to this enlightenment stage and mm-hmm. it starts to bring up, like, old things. There's this whole book about it, 12-hour really? walk. Probably really, like, opens up your mind sort of thing. Cause yeah. You're, you're just in nature and on your phone. Maybe you do some DMT or something, too. Mm. Like mushrooms, 12 hours of mushrooms. I don't know about that. Get some food poisoning real quick. God. <laughs> but um, new shirts as well. The new shirts have been selling great. Mm-hmm. Um, check those out, com. Plant They're more su- trees. Those shirts cool. are freaking awesome. And we are trying to hit the merch a little harder. 
We were trying to hit the podcast a little harder. Mm -hmm. Um, The main channel is taking a backseat to all of that, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, but it's also quiet season. It's not really racing time of year. There's nothing going on. I feel bad for Coop. He's like itching to get to the track or do something. I know. But it's fine because I'm not spending a ton of money on it. Yeah. So I'm having fun doing this stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to keep doing this as much as possible. Um, we got a, new, a good podcast next week. Yes, we do have an exciting podcast coming up. We will have back-to-back podcast weeks. Yeah, probably. Both this Friday and next Friday. Oh, yeah, yeah. So back-to-back. Mm-hmm. Doubling up. Um, we're going to, we're also trying to do more of the clips on the podcast stuff. So yes. Bronte's been taking over a lot of that. Well, AI has been helping her. Yeah. We, yeah, I gotta, I gotta do that. So she, we got to pay for more time, which is annoying. <laughs> yeah. So you can use like an AI program to edit. It's actually really cool. Yeah. It's very, it's yeah, crazy. So go how follow well Bogetti Studios on TikTok because that's where we're going to be posting Yes. Them. Check out Bogetti Bunch, Bogetti Studios on TikTok mm-hmm. or TikToks if you're on there. Very fun channel. We need to post some more on there, too. Yeah, let's do a, a studio tour after. Yes, we will definitely do a studio tour. Um, we can wrap it up, though. It's 40, 40 minutes if you want to wrap it up. Yeah. Okay. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. This was a nice short one, me and Bronte hanging out. But that is going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it saucy. We will see you next time. See you later. Bye.